I got my mistress pregnant. We need to break up. That's how my husband Camille apologized to me in such a flippant manner. I was dumbfounded and my affection for him ran out. It was exactly six months ago. Is the mistress someone I know? Yeah, yeah, it's Kyra. Remember meeting her again at Alice's wedding reception? Since then, my husband seemed completely unashamed. Alice's wedding was the year before last. So you've been cheating for over a year? Alice was a college classmate of mine. And the mistress, Kyra, was a junior who two years behind me. She was in the same research group as Alice and we played tennis together in college. So, I remember her well. She was nicknamed Little Devil behind her back and was quite famous in a way. Huh, oh, is that so? Time flies when you get older. My husband just laughed it off. What on earth is he thinking? I can't understand him at all. I'm Viola, 30 years old. I met my husband in the college tennis club. Despite him being five years older at 35, the reason he knew me was that he was an alumnus who often showed up. He loved happy hours, had lots of friends and was friendly with everyone. He took great care of the freshmen and was a kind person. I only realized that it was limited to girls after we started dating. I was made to cry many times due to his cheating habits back then, but I loved him and married him right after graduation. But once I started working, I got to know the real him, or rather, his useless side. The reason he frequently appeared in the tennis club's clubhouse, acting all high and mighty with the juniors, was that he was completely ignored by his peers. The truth was that he was so incompetent at his job that he wasn't given any serious responsibilities, so he had a lot of free time. Even now, there is no prospect of a raise or promotion. He's just a pretentious good-for-nothing who can't do his job or household chores. He is utterly useless. I tried various things to change my husband after we got married, but his refusal to change made me give up. The reason I hadn't divorced him was not just that work was busy and it was a hassle, but also because his parents were good people. A reason that had nothing to do with my husband himself. So, look, we need to split up quickly because of the baby coming. You can have this apartment and I'll leave. That's the end of it, okay? I was taken aback with his careless words and my husband with a sly grin. What? No way. Let's part ways cleanly. This is not a good opportunity. As I neared my 40s, I started wanting a child. I had graduated college and started working as a full-time employee. I was earning more than my husband and my company had great parental and maternity leave benefits. I was ready for a baby, but it wasn't happening and it was heartbreaking. There was no love left for my husband who had an affair and got the other woman pregnant. I wanted to completely and cleanly end the relationship. What made me even angrier was that he didn't apologize at all. He just spoke his needs and demands without any remorse. It was clearly time to end this unpleasant relationship that had lasted for years. We'll involve a lawyer, ask for compensation and divide the property. Of course, we'll request something from Kyra too. What? I don't have that kind of savings and Kyra's pregnant. I don't want to stress her out. Well then, why don't you take on the debt and pay for it yourself? It's your affair that caused this separation, so take responsibility properly. When I glared at my husband, he raised his hands in surrender. I guess I have no choice. Maybe my dad will take on the debt for me. With that, I moved forward with the divorce and hired a lawyer. 
I received multiple calls from my in-laws, pleading and begging me not to leave. My father-in-law even cried, saying, if Viola leaves him, he is finished. And my mother-in-law begged, please reconsider Viola, I love you like my own daughter. But I couldn't go back. After revealing everything about my husband's constant infidelity and laziness at home, even they finally understood. We are truly sorry, they said, bowing their heads in shame. They even paid the compensation in a lump sum on behalf of my husband, who had no savings. They made him promise never to ask for their help with that again and to repay them promptly. I still can't understand how such a careless and irresponsible man came from such decent and responsible parents. I'm going back to my parents' house. The divorce process, which I had thought would be a hassle, was over before I knew it. I returned to my recently relocated family home and half a year passed by. I had stopped thinking about my ex-husband, busy with work on weekdays and cleaning the house on weekends. I received a call from my best friend, Alice. Alice was furious from the start. Viola, did you know? Your ex-husband Camille and Kyra, they are living in a new high-rise apartment and bragging about it everywhere. Kyra just called me for a baby shower party. The presents have to be over $100 and the participant fee is $100 too. It's insane, right? She yelled. I didn't know that Kyra had given birth and I didn't understand why she had even contacted Alice. My ex-husband knew it, and so did Kyra. They both knew that Alice is my best friend. Why would Kyra even invite Alice? She must know that Alice would tell me everything. When I said this hesitantly, Alice's anger erupted even more. She did it on purpose, on purpose. That horrible woman said, I'm so happy now, thanks to Viola breaking up with Camille. Can you believe she would tell me that? She's the worst kind of person. I want to put her in her place somehow. Little devil from our student days has finally grown into a demon, hasn't she? In college, Kyra was a bad woman, meddling with the man of happy couples. Even if couples fought because of her, she kept a calm face. If they break up just because another girl shows interest, it's not true, love, right? They'll break up eventually anyway. So, what's the big deal? She would say, stretching her words in a saccharine voice, smirking. I pitied her, thinking she had never truly loved anyone. But I wasn't naive enough to get involved with her. I decided to keep my distance. For now, I didn't care about Kyra. There, there was something else I couldn't ignore. Alice, speaking of which, there's only one newly built high-rise apartment building, right? Did you hear when they moved in, or anything? I've never met them. Alice quickly answered. Apparently, it was very recently. They were bragging about getting in luckily because a spot opened up. It seemed someone who bought a new high-rise apartment had to relocate for work and had put it back on the market without moving in. I see, that makes sense then. Viola, your moving day is this Sunday, right? The baby shower party is on Saturday. So, you only have to be careful for one day. There are plenty of elevators and the entrances might be even different. You're right, we haven't met so far, so it should be fine. Alice and I laughed together, but an unexpected situation still occurred. On Saturday, I ran into my ex-husband and Kyra in the first floor elevator hall. My ex and Kyra were getting off the elevator, and I was waiting for it. Our eyes met perfectly, and there was no escape. Hey, Viola, what are you doing here? My ex-husband was the first to speak. Then, Kyra chimed in. Viola, are you here to celebrate with us? You wanted to see our adorable baby, didn't you? 
Her voice was bright and sweet, her face smiling, but her eyes weren't laughing at all. What? Seriously? You came to participate without an invitation? To observe? <laughs> to see the high-rise apartment? Or our prince? Hearing the baby, referred to as baby and prince, was irritating. That's not it. I was just waiting for the elevator, I said, consciously, switching to a polite tone midway. Camille was my ex, but now a stranger, and I didn't want to cause a scene here. Huh? So you're planning to come to my house after all? You are so silly, Viola. Stop being so stubborn. You are probably just jealous that we live in a super luxurious high-rise apartment and that our adorable prince was born. You still love me and feel lonely, don't you? Just admit it, you wanted to see me again. Viola, that's not acceptable. No matter how much you love Camille, I'm the one he's married to now. It's a crime to barge into our home uninvited. Jealous, are you? Kyra, you're really cute. So sorry, Viola, but Kyra and our prince are my priority now. So you're not welcome here. I hadn't seen my ex-husband in six months, and his thoughts were as outlandish as ever. Kyra also seemed completely uncomprehensible. My cheating ex-husband and his new lover were a perfect match in a way. I regretted wasting my precious twenties on my ex-husband. I'm utterly ashamed of having dated and married Camille. I wish to bury those memories in darkness. I should have left him sooner. I had not made excuses and just broken up with him. I wouldn't have had to listen to this nonsense from my ex-husband and his lover. I was shocked, but my words seemed to have struck a nerve with my ex-husband. What's that? You're really lacking the charm. Learn from Kyra. Even her jealousy is cute. She's just giving birth, but still takes the effort to look stylish for me. Don't you think she's admirable? Aren't you embarrassed to be wearing such cheap clothes and no makeup? Not embarrassed at all. I was just going to the grocery store. I was wearing a simple white t-shirt and jeans. They weren't ragged, but they were clean. That's exactly the problem. That's why I grew tired of you. Enough already. We have nothing to do with each other. Just go home. Annoyed by my indifferent tone, my ex-husband waved his hand as if shooing a dog or cat. No, this is my house, actually. That's why I was waiting for the elevator. What? Seriously? You're lying, right? Viola, that joke isn't funny at all. Seeing their unbelieving expressions, I had no choice but to explain. I've been living with my parents in this high-rise apartment for six months now. My father was approached by the salespeople when there was talk of selling the land he owns here. They told him that living in a high-rise would be more convenient than a single-family home, especially as he's getting older. But it's not like the entire grounds of the high-rise was our land, it was just a part of it. Still, enough money came in from selling in. And during the negotiations, we were able to move into one of the higher floors for much less than market value. What? You are landowners with that much money? If I'd known, I wouldn't have broken up with you. Give me back the compensation money. There was no need for a property settlement, was there? That's a separate matter. The compensation was a result of your affair, and the property settlement was a settlement between us as a married couple. I sighed. Glancing at Kyra, who was mumbling to herself without saying anything, I caught, I can't believe Viola is living in a high-rise. I thought I had totally won. Kyra glared at me and said, But Viola, you don't have a baby or a loving darling, do you? I haven't lost yet. Look, I was never competing with you, Kyra. I'm actually thankful to you for giving me the opportunity to break up with Camille. 
Oh, and I'm moving out of my house tomorrow, so I don't think we'll see each other again. What? Why? You've just moved into a high-rise. Both were surprised, but I shrugged. Maybe it's a matter of different values. It just wasn't a good fit for my family. I found living in a high-rise wasn't suitable for hanging laundry outside. There are no balconies on the higher floors for safety, and only some windows can be opened. It wasn't suitable for my mother and me, who want to dry our laundry and bedding in the natural sunlight and wind without using a dryer. Plus, the sunlight was intense, and it was too hot even with the air conditioning on. It shakes quite a bit even with a magnitude 3 earthquake. Apparently, the building is designed to sway to prevent collapse and the higher floors shake more. It was terrifying. Most stressful of all was the daily elevator ride. It gets pretty crowded during the morning commute and it takes time since it stops on each floor. The advertised 3 minutes walk from the station and in the elevator. We were too bothered by the drawbacks unique to high-rise living, so we decided to live in a regular house with a garden after all. Luckily, our apartment sold quickly at almost the same price we bought it for. As I briefly explained, both my ex-husband and Kyra grinned. Oh, so we'll never see each other again. So, a high-rise wasn't suitable for commoners like you. It's more suited for an elite celebrity family, like mine. I couldn't understand how he came to that conclusion, but one thing became clear. What I grew to hate and gave up on was that part of you. Pretentious, but with no real ability to back it up. Unwilling to change or make an effort. I became utterly fed up with you. But it's okay now, you're unfixable. So. Goodbye. I repeated my ex-husband's words, giving them right back to him. Stepping into the just-arrived elevator, I glance at Kyra, who's glaring at my astonished ex-husband and me. Right before the doors close, I add one final remark. By the way, are you sure the child is really yours? What do you mean? My ex-husband looks at me, utterly confused. I mean, exactly what I said. Right, Kyra? You know what I mean, don't you? The doors close then, so I don't know what happens next. In reality, when we were struggling to have a child, I underwent tests at the gynecologists and the results showed no problem on my end. So, I started to wonder if the problem was with my husband, but he refused to get tested. That's why I left that insinuating comment. After that, I heard a story from a mutual friend who went to Kyra's baby shower. Despite bragging about living in a high-rise apartment, my ex-husband had been living on the third floor. Plus, despite demanding expensive gifts and participant fees, the only food served were cheap snacks from the grocery store. When a friend softly complained, Kyra reportedly exploded, saying, You should be grateful to see my baby up close and pay the money, of course. The atmosphere quickly became tense, and even though my ex-husband tried to mediate, things escalated into a massive fight between him and Kyra, resulting in a total mess. All thanks in part to my earlier cryptic remark. It seems my ex-husband and Kyra had moved into a high-rise, but life was tough, and they were trying to swindle money from their friends by fabricating reasons. Apparently, my ex-husband let it slip, and their friends were furious and left. As for me, I successfully moved into a single-family house with a garden and started living with my family. Recently, I began keeping an adorable kitten. Our former high-rise had been found to have significant defects and illegal construction methods, and it's been in the news every day. Now, even if they want to sell, they can't. 
We talked as a family and concluded that maybe we were surprisingly lucky. I'm very happy now. My ties with my husband are severed and I've achieved peaceful days. On a day off in the afternoon, as I fold the completely dry laundry, my kitten sometimes falls asleep on the clothes. Seeing that adorable sleeping face, I think to myself, today was another good day.